Hello everyone, this is Joe Neville and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the API of an Aruba OS switch to turn the port PoE on and off. Now I picked up a query yesterday on Twitter about how to do this, about how to deactivate an AP or you know this would work for any kind of IoT device that you've got using the PoE on a port and if you wanted to turn that off programmatically there is a way of doing that via the API. So I'm going to use Python um, to do this. Now I uh, put this together in about 20 minutes yesterday because I didn't have the code beforehand um, but using the schema I was able to put it together. So I think this is uh, kind of a useful way of stepping through those uh, processes. So I've got my lucky coding shirt on, I've got a uh, cup of coffee here, so let's dive right into it. So first of all, I'll put a link in the description about how you can get the schema, where to, where to find it online. It's next to the release notes, I believe. So I've got mine locally. So this is what I did. I opened it up, it comes with, uh, it's zipped. Uh, I opened it up, device rest API, uh, and I went for services, it's wired and then server. So we open that up. And so I'm looking for something to interact with the PoE. I did a find on PoE, I found this service. So that this is looking promising. Um, and because I want to turn the PoE on or off, um, that's not going to be a get call because get is to get information i know that it's either going to be a post or a put now uh, a post is to create some new information but the poe state is already on the switch so it makes sense that it's actually a put because i want to update the status okay so we i was looking for a put there now this sounds promising updates the given uh, poe in the model so we'll have a, a put call and the dot 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 is the first part of the url so that that's going to be your HTTP, then that, you, then your IP address and the version, um, etc., etc., which I'll show you in a moment. But then this is the additional information that we need to get into the PoE data and to uh, and to alter that. So it's ports, it's the port ID, and then PoE. So that kind of makes sense to me. Okay, now uh, then we have the request. So what I did is click on here because this is how you get the detail now this is a this isn't for the faint-hearted this stuff but with some experience you kind of pick up um, and find your way around with it so these are the properties and what I was looking for is something that suggests that I'm turning the PoE status on or off so I found this is underscore PoE underscore enabled and the default value is true so this is a boolean a boolean being a true or a false PoE is turned on on the switch by default, so this sounds really promising to me, the fact that this is true, and if I change that data to false, that sounds like I'm going to turn the PoE off. So that's what I tried to do. And we, like I said, within about 20 minutes, I'd put together some rough code um, to, and was actually able to turn it on and off. But uh, what I've done is I finessed the code somewhat, and I'll just step you through that. So that, that, those are essentially the steps. So the code is here. So we're stepping you through this code. Uh, I'm importing requests. I've got the URL lib3 so I can turn off the uh, warnings if required. I'm using keyring. Now I like the, the keyring library because it means that you don't have to put your passwords on screen, uh, you know, which is always good. And pretty print just for printing to screen. Now, I've hard-coded the IP address. Obviously, this can be a variable that you enter when you're running the commands, if you wish. Like I said, this is, pre this is pretty quick and dirty, this stuff. So I've just hard-coded the variable actually in the script here. I've created a class of AOS switch with... Um, so when that instantiates, I have various arguments to that so I've got the IP address which will come from up here I've got the username admin which I know is standard you you can change that when you instantiate the class and I'm only using port 10 you can change that w again when you run the commands the variables are fed into the class here uh, I've created this URL which is so this is essentially like the boilerplate for the URL whether it, I'm just using the HTTP then I've got my IP address so forward slash rest forward slash v4 so we don't have to keep repeatedly putting that code in when i instantiate the class i'm going to do a login that will grab the cookie for me 
This is all pretty standard stuff for interacting with the API. I've got my method for logging in here. And as you can see, I'm using the username from above. So admin, that's going to be. And I have my password, which I'm getting from Keyring. So that will grab the password for me. Do the post for the login. Like, Oh, and then I've got to, to grab the cookie. Print to screen. Okay or not okay, etc. Or you always want to use a logout as well because you otherwise you'll run out of sessions on the switch. So I've got a logout method. Get VLANs was just some boilerplate stuff. And here's the more interesting part. So this is the PoE method. Um, it's a put. So if you remember from the schema, it was a put. And this is the URL. So this is what I grabbed from. The first part, so it's if we go here, uh, this is PoE gone. There we are. Uh, so this part here for the put, that's the information that they I then transferred into the Python script for this here. So it's ports forward slash the port and then PoE. Then this JSON that came from. That was the other part. So that is from this here. So it's is underscore PoE enabled with, with the default of true. So I've changed that because it's PoE off. I've changed that to false there when sending the cookie, etc. So this should turn off PoE for us. Then what I did, some very basic uh, checking. So if I get an HTTP 200 call back, then I'll put poe for the port number is off if not something went wrong then i've written another method very similar and guess what it changes the is poe enabled to true and then prints the screen if it's back on so that's essentially it it's a login log out i've got poe on and poe off in a class and i put my ip address in and i've got my username and password fed into that that's the structure of how to write the API calls in Python. Okay, so to demonstrate this then, I've got my VS Code over here on the left. It, I'm going to run the Python in. I've got an SSH session over here to the switch. So if I show you, show, uh, what is it? P Power over Ethernet for port 10. You can see that it is enabled. And then down here in the bottom right, I've got my iPhone focused on the AP, so that's connected to port 10. So watch, you can see that this is all live. So watch the um, watch these lights here, okay? So those are gonna be turning on and off, right. Uh, let us go back to the Python then. So let's clear that. So we go Python 3, I will import PoE, because that's my module, so I've called it poe.py so I import that here and then I'll create switch equals so it'll be poe.aos switch because that's the class so it's module.class to instantiate that okay so now I'm logged in and what I can then do is run those methods so one of them was poe underscore off Watch on the bottom right as I hit return. Those lights should turn off. Okay, there we go. And I can do on to turn them back on. It's back on. You see the lights have come back on there. So the AP's booting or I can do an off. If we go over here, just to prove that. Power enabled, no. If I do an on, lights have come back on there. And I can run my command and you'll see power enabled, yes. Oh, and before I finish, what must I not forget to do is a log out. And so we're logged out there.
There we have it then, PoE on and off on an Aruba Era switch programmatically via the API using Python code. That was a bit rough and ready. I think the workflow of using the schema and how that relates to the code is useful to show. I know most people won't be doing this, that they'll just uh, copy examples, which is absolutely fine because that's what open source is all about after all. Um, but if you were trying to find something that you couldn't find an example, is, that's essentially it. I have posted the original version of my script up on community.arubanetworks.com. Just go to the developer community. I've got everything in global, the PoE example, because the script is just everything running at the global level. So you can run this to turn off the PoE of a certain port with an IP address. Essentially the bare bones of everything in there so you can see the JSON you can see the API calls and it's this that I worked up into that class. But that's all for now let me know if you found this useful give it a like or a dislike please subscribe all of those good things. Thank you for watching my name is Joe Neville and goodbye.